Commander Dragon whistled. Damn, that's talent. He was impressed, after watching the whole scene between Naruto and the traitor dragon couldn't help but imagine having that in his forces. The kid could outrun and outprank his men since he was ten, and the young Jinchuriki was known to be stealthy even in Orange Perfect for ANBU. And after creating hundreds of clones like nothing, Dragon knew his services would be invaluable. Pity he was so young, the Hokage would be near impossible to convince. Yes, his chakra capacity is huge and with his solid henja shapeshift, really he has more potential than any of the graduates. Sarutobi chuckled and lit his pipe. Dragon whipped his head up. Impossible. Shapeshifting, as in not an illusion? He drooled slightly when the Hokage nodded and knew right then. Screw the age, shapeshifting took huge reserves and even then only a few bloodline holders seemed to be able to use it. It was probably the fox, and as such had unlimited uses if Naruto could figure out how to transfer his abilities to become animals or even objects. I want him dragon clipped. The Hokage and the ANBU guards gaped at him, wondering if their commander was finally losing it. Sarutobi quickly squashed the idea. Absolutely not. He's a genin now, according to Iraka's headband on him, and thus can become ANBU. Hokage-sama, surely you see how much latent talent he has? And those academy reports show he should have graduated three years ago? Dragon smirked at the slight wince on his boss's face. Saratobi had called upon Naruto's file after he failed that afternoon needless to say he was pissed at the revelation that the boy should have graduated at nine, not fail three times. Contrary to popular belief failing the ninjutsu portion didn't stop one from becoming a gen and you had to fail three sections. Apparently Mizuki and other teachers would intentionally alter the tests before Iraka saw yet were stupid enough to keep the originals in the file cabinets. Nobody had ever asked for the orphan's real file, and thus his scores reported a moron. If Naruto hadn't stolen the scroll he would have been given an honorary graduation in the morning. Saratobi knew he failed the boy greatly, but letting him in the darkness of their world so early was not something he should allow, no matter the talent. He just made the rank, though. Naruto will be placed under Kakashi. I'm sure he will learn plenty there and you can recruit him in a few years. He said with a voice of steel. Normal men would let it drop dragon was not normal. He faked his death for his village, changed his fighting style in many ways for the ruse. He once faced ten IWA Chunin and Jonin with three kunai and barely any chakra he still hasn't spent their bounties completely. Dragon knew not what backing down meant not when it came to the village's safety. Kakashi is inept in teaching and life at the moment. His teammate will no doubt be the Uchiha, who we both know is a flight risk. Having our Jinchuriki make bonds with a potential traitor is foolish. Sarutobi faltered. Good. Just a little more. Also, being an ANBU who only answered to the Hokage would protect him should anything ever happen to you. And let's be honest, keeping Naruto away from public eye for several years could finally let their hatred die down. When he leaves he will be given whatever rank he deserves. What Dragon didn't say was that a few years would hopefully be at least ten, he viewed this as a sort of long-term investment. Why train 3A and BU that would leave within a couple of years due to stress or wanting something else in their career when you can mold one amazing A and BU and have them for over a decade? It worked with Tenzo, who was still in the forces without showing a sign of burnout. Of course, Dragon wouldn't tell his leader that, nor would he mention that he planned for the kid to become captain level within two years Saratobi didn't take too kindly to rushing a ninja's training, but Naruto's ability with shadow clones just begged to be abused. Very well. I will consent to this for a time. What squad do you suggest? Sarutobi sighed. He sensed it was for the best, for all parties involved especially the boy he failed dash, and maybe the squad he was assigned would turn Naruto into a fantastic shinobi. I think Ro would be best Tenzo can train him into the ground, help him with the fox, and give him some manners. That, or kill him for his boisterous personality. Ha, huh, maybe this isn't a good idea? Nah, your genius knows no bounds, dragon. 
Almost another hour passed of the two men smoothing out details such as living arrangements and strategies to improve Naruto's diet. Dragon was in the middle of suggesting in a joking way, of course, for the most part shock therapy to loosen the addiction when the door opens and his new subordinate walks in with the scroll, the bright orange lighting up the night. Not even Dragon was sure how he was so slippery in that outfit but imagining his skill in proper clothes sent shivers down his spine. He put his game face on not that anyone could see. Time to tell the kid the good news. Who didn't want to be ANBU? 30 minutes later. And after Ira sensei gave me his headband I dropped Mizuki off at the ANBU guard station and took Ira sensei to the hospital and came here. Naruto said, ignoring the commander with practiced ease, used to Gigi having a sentry even during private talks. He felt sickened with himself his own stupidity led to his teacher staying in the hospital overnight. The looks of disgust from the nurses when he handed over his favorite man seemed justified for once, he had to get stronger, to make sure it didn't happen again. The Hokage seat seemed hollow at this point, if he couldn't protect one person, how could he be the shield of the whole village? Well, well, I'm glad you took the news of your tenant quite well seeing Naruto's major look of betrayal, the Hokage winced but continued, and I want to talk about your graduation. I didn't pass? Naruto was panicking inside. The only reason he didn't pass years ago was the stupid clone jutsu. He knew the jutsu now, or at least a variation, so what was the problem? How was he supposed to protect his precious people however few they were if he had to repeat another year at the academy? Oh, you pass, Naruto. Don't worry about that. It's just... Sarutobi faltered in his resolve, considering changing his mind. He really didn't feel right about this. Fortunately, or unfortunately, the Hokage wasn't sure yet, his most trusted ninja had no fears and instead seemed giddy like a child with a new toy. I hope Naruto survives his fascination. I wonder how Naruto will deal with Dragon's seemingly personal aversion to him eating ramen constantly. Originally you would have been assigned to a team with Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, and Kakashi Hataki. However, putting you under a regular genin squad would be a mistake, both because of your abilities and the security risk of having two high-target genin on the same team. As a result, you won't be in the normal forces, at least for a while. You're under my command, kid. Welcome to ANBU. The truth was stretched a bit but Naruto bought it, if a bit flabbergasted. He recognized the ANBU as Dragon the top ANBU. Gulping a bit, he nodded weakly. Why am I a high target? He asked. Sasuke was in Uchiha and the last one at that, of course he'd be important. But Naruto? No one wanted him here, why would it be different anywhere else? You're a Jinchuriki, a person who holds a tailed beast. That makes you an asset to Kanova here Dragon brushed off his leader's K.I. The kid need the truth, not lies like the Hokage thought was best for them. It's a sad fact, but the truth. In times of war enemy villages will try to take you out first, and missions you were sent on could be sabotaged to either kidnap or kill you. To fix this, having you in ANBU lets you be invisible while you train to become strong enough for these threats. His voice was blunt, but Naruto found he rather liked that. His Gigi lied to him his entire life, every time he asked about why he was hated or spit on the Hokage would let slip sweet lies to placate him. This guy, though speaking things he'd rather not hear, being viewed as a trump card and primary target wasn't pleasant, was honest. Naruto found it amusing that other villagers desired him more than anyone here save a few, but chopped it up to wanting the fox, not him. What Commander Dragon should have said, Naruto, is that the shadows are safer for a few years. It is my fault for not ensuring you receive proper training from your first day at the academy like the other Jinchuriki do. In ANBU I am able to fix my mistake. If you wish to leave the forces after you become Jonin level, then at that time you can. Sarutobi smiled at his surrogate grandson. That smile fell when Naruto bowed a bit stiffly. Understood, Hokage-sama. I am ready for my first post. Naruto wasn't sure how he felt at the Hokage, 
but he knew the leader screwed him over. From the sounds of things he should have been trained or at least told of his burden not kept in the dark. Normally he would just brush the incident under the rug, but this time his mouth wouldn't let the easy forgiveness come out. Saratobi knew he screwed up, losing Naruto's affectionate nickname coupled with the barely held contempt means he lost his respect and trust. Besides being a personal issue, the Jinchuriki had to stay loyal to the reigning Hokage to keep political power in check he had to gain his trust back. I'll make it up to you, Naruto. I promise. Dragon seemed pleased by Naruto's acceptance. If the kid refused or threw a fit he would have been hard-pressed to have the Hokage's backing. From his files Naruto wouldn't have done so, but the possibility was always there. Come with me, Naruto. The men are ready for the bonfire. He rubbed his hands together. Something they've wanted to do for years was finally coming to pass. Every ANBU assigned to Orange Duty had fantasies about what was about to happen. Naruto blinked at the comment and dark chuckles from around him. The bonfire? He squeaked. They couldn't mean that, could they? Of your jumpsuits. Don't worry you'll be issued enough uniforms and off-duty clothes at HQ. Nuu was heard all through the village as Naruto's cries of anguish echoed. Umbu HQ. Naruto gulped as he followed Dragon through the dark hallways that smelled faintly of blood. At the quartermaster Naruto had signed his life away in blood, promising at least seven years unless debilitating injuries were specific recommendations from the Hokage. He looked at the uniform given to him a size extra small ANBU gear set in his arms, the mask looking up at him. It was supposed to be a mouse, its red whisker marks and black nose marking staring up at him, but the features were too vague in his opinion. Naruto's nerves were on high alert still. He was even too nervous to care much about the obvious jab to his height and immaturity. Soon they reached the locker rooms. Locker 123 is yours, mouse. You can change and bring your kindling or old clothes out to the communal area, two doors on the right. Tonight you can sleep in the dorm and tomorrow, before team practice your captain will find you an apartment in the ANBU complex. ANBU complex? Naruto quirked an eyebrow. He never could find where the ANBU lived or else he would have pranked them. Then again, maybe that's why I didn't know. Yes, the complex. It's a series of apartment buildings that only ANBU and approved Jonin can live in. Nobody will question you staying there or vandalize your lodgings. Oh, and I have no say in what you do in your free time, but I feel the need to remind you that pranking high-level ninjas when you live next door could be considered a hazard to your health. Dragon replied smoothly. Somehow Naruto could tell the man enjoyed messing with his head. All right. I'll keep that in mind, Dragon-sama. He said with the right suffix on the way to HQ Naruto attempted a nickname and found out what flying 30 feet felt like. Then Naruto processed what he heard. There goes his epic plans for off-duty mischief. Glad to hear you agree. Now, put on your uniform, masks are to be worn on duty at all times outside the base, but you can leave it on your belt in HQ. What about you? Naruto asked. They were in HQ but Dragon still wore his thick cloak and mask. I'm the commander, Mouse, I'm never off duty, and my identity is an S-class secret even from my subordinates. With that his new leader walked stiffly out, signaling the end of discussion. Ten minutes later Naruto walked into the common room, mask clipped to his belt, idly rubbing his ANBU tattoo. Inside forty on and off duty ANBU were gathered around his piles of clothes. Snacks were passed around and cameras were out at the ready. Everything looked oddly normal, considering these were the elite. And I'm one of them, even if I don't deserve to be. Yet. But soon, I'll prove I can be useful. A man with a faceplate headband and fish eyes spotted him from a circle of chattering agents. He beckons Naruto over. Welcome, Naruto, mask name Mouse. I am your captain, Tenzo. On missions you will call me Tiger. These are your teammates, Yugo mask name Cat and Hikaru mask name Wolf. 
The now identified Tenzo was formal and seemed to demand respect. Naruto, still not feeling back to normal after his revelation that he wasn't a kick ass ninja yet, responded in a very un Naruto like way. Thank you, Captain. I am sorry if my lack of skills causes you trouble. Naruto attempted his best respectful voice, knowing the childishness wouldn't be appreciated. The others with Tenzo were slightly shocked by the quiet and polite reply. The Naruto they all knew from childhood pranks would have shouted something along the lines of how awesome he was in dream to be Hokage not apologize for his obvious weakness. Hikaru, known as one of the avid supporters of Naruto's epic escapades in personality, decides his new teammate needed to lighten up or become a mini Kakashi. He flips his long brown hair, giving his new Kohai a light Hyuga smirk. Oi! Shibi, what's a squirt like you doing on Team Row? Honestly, Hikaru was looking forward to having the blonde as his squad mate he himself was an avid joke enthusiast not on the clock, of course. He felt that Naruto just needed a nudge after all that happened Mizuki had already had many visitors after news spread of his attempts to kill Naruto. Naruto grew a tick mark. Who you calling it Chibi? And I'll have you know I'll be kicking your ass one of these days. And just like that the dam broke and the old Naruto shined through, if only a bit more subdued and weary from the betrayal. It was as if a slight weight lifted off his shoulders as he defended his height and abilities. Humph, I'll believe it when I see it. Now throw your jumpsuit in the fire and let's start the party. Hikaru drags Naruto over to a contained fire pit. Naruto pales at the prospect of getting rid of his sweets. It's not that he loved the color orange above all others he preferred red in all honesty or that he liked jumpsuits they were hard to maneuver in but they served a purpose, if he could outstealth the elite and paint the Hokage mountain in that, he could do it in anything, and it became a part of him, a way to not be ignored by villagers. But, Naruto had a feeling the ANBU in the room would force him to burn them if he refused, and he had no delusions of beating dozens of elites. After a quick moment of contemplation Naruto steeled himself and tossed the suit into the flames, determination in his eyes. That was my childhood. Now, I'm a Numian ANBU recruit. I'll become strong enough to keep tonight from repeating or ending in a body bag for someone. Cheers echoed through the room and a hand pounded on his back. A lizard ANBU gave him a noogie, and Hikaru tried to stuff a rice ball down his throat. Before the night waned and he passed out into a creaky dorm bed, ANBU had already become a better home than Naruto's old one. Next day. Naruto stared at his new quarters, his three boxes of stuff already stacked neatly in the corner. With break-ins common due to the location of Naruto's apartment in the red light district, it never seemed wise to keep too much stuff around. He dropped the duffel bag carrying the three extra uniform sets and six off-duty outfits ANBU pants, long black or green sleeved shirts on the new brown couch. Looking around he couldn't see why this apartment was half the cost of the others. It was small. It was plain. It was perfect. Naruto had a wide grin, giddy despite himself. Yada! This is amazing! Look at this couch so firm! And this window no drafts. The kitchen working appliances. And the bedroom so comfy. He ran from spot to spot like a chicken who lost its head. Captain Tenzo shook his head at his newest recruit's enthusiasm, but brushed it off as Naruto never having stuff half this nice. Yugo chuckled. And Hikaru? Well, he joined in. This carpet is so soft. And the chairs are comfy. He bounded around just as much as Naruto did. Yugo face palmed at the two youngest members' antics. Hikaru. Naruto's apartment is exactly like yours. There is no reason for you to act like a caffeine high toddler. She honestly didn't understand how Hikaru made ANBU, despite his abilities at both taijutsu and ninjutsu, he was too carefree. Naruto was an exception, he was young and both Yugao and Tenzo had plans to beat him into a respectable member of Team Ro. They had a reputation to take back. They used to be the top squad until Itachi defected and Kakashi left, damaging their image. 
Of course, as she observed Hikaru taunting Naruto from the ceiling and basking in the blonzot expression, Yugo had to wonder if it was already too late for a complete makeover. Hey, Yugo-senpai? Naruto's voice cut through her musings. Who are my neighbors? He knew Yugo lived across from him, Hikaru lived to her left, and Captain Tenzo had a larger apartment to her right. The new ninja never had neighbors before and the thought excited him to no end. Until he saw his entire squad wince. He he. See, there's a reason this apartment is so cheap. Tenzo started. Kakashi's fine he's on your right and stays quiet as a mouse. But to your right. Yugao trailed off as she hugged herself. Is a monster so horrible it made a single word become outlawed Hikaru's voice called from the ceiling. They shuddered together, and Naruto scoffed. He couldn't be that bad. I'll bet you guys are just trying to scare me. Y-O-S-H. I hear I have a youthful new neighbor to bask in the springtime of youth with. A boisterous voice appears in Naruto's doorway accompanied by the most horrible sight imaginable a green spandex alien. The alien gave a thumbs up and made his teeth sparkle. I am the extremely youthful Mado guy, Kanoha's youthful green beast. Welcome youthful friend. It is most youthful to be an ANBU so young. Naruto paled as the creature grabbed his hand in a handshake that swung him around the room. It was then Naruto noticed none of his new comrades were in sight. Traitors, do the bonds we built mean nothing? In their respective apartments his teammates each sent a silent prayer of apologies to their youngest new friend. Yuuzumaki Naruto, nice to meet you. He managed out between poundings into the floor. Dai would have continued, but an aloof drawl stopped him. Ma, ma, guy. Don't kill our neighbor before I meet him. The voice was accompanied by a cyclops reading the same orange book Naruto saw Hokage Gigi read. The man's eye widened and narrowed when he spotted Naruto in his ANBU gear. Great, another hater. He thought glumly. Naruto wasn't aware, but Kakashi was narrowing his eye at the fact his secret little brother figure and supposed future student was in a high security ranking apartment wearing the black ops gear, his tattoo still fresh. Whoever put him into ANBU at his age is going to count how many jutsu I know as I test them on their dying bodies. Kakashi Hataki was many things a failure as a teammate and big brother being the two most important ones, in his opinion, but he wouldn't stand for a newly promoted genin that barely passed to die in the core. Before he went to his obviously senile Hokage he needed some information. My name is Kakashi Hataki. Who are you? You're awfully young to be an ANBU. You're what, eleven? He bantered, fishing for any scrap of insight. Uzumaki Naruto, and yes, I know I'm too young and inexperienced for this, but the Hokage and Commander put me in it for a reason, okay? And I'm twelve. I'm not that small. Naruto snapped a bit at the man, not liking him one bit. Kakashi ignored the tone, sights already set on a certain Kage. His old team arrives then, no doubt hiding from the horrors that were his best friend. And looking at how Naruto was in a bone-crushing hug listening about youth, he couldn't blame them. Kakashi drags his old kohai into the hall. Tenzo, he says coolly. Why is my future student in ANBU? The anger was evident and promising pain for lies. Tenzo met his gaze evenly. Senpai. You will have to take that up with the Hokage. As far as I know Naruto was put onto my squad for his potential as both a ninjutsu specialist and tracking slash traps master with his shadow clones. And no offense, but you've never shown interest in him before. Just because you feel you owe a debt to his father doesn't mean you can cast him aside until it suits you. If you'll excuse me I have a limited time to turn a genin into an ANBU. He left a stunned Kakashi and ducked his head into the doorway in time to see Guy offer to take Naruto on early morning training. Training? Yes. Naruto said excitably. Training was always welcome. Course, he'd never seen Guy's methods before. Y-O-S-H. Then I will wake you at four tomorrow, my most youthful neighbor. 
Akam, time to go. Naruto, make two clones and have them study the rule and code of conduct books I left in your bag. We have training until nine tonight. Naruto nodded as he slid his mask on, becoming mouse to the outside world. The people in his complex may come to know his identity over time but the more obscure he was to the common ninja and villager, the better. Yes, Captain. He didn't even try to say Captain Fisheye's dragon was bad enough, what could his captain do? Yugo held onto Naruto's shoulder and Shun shined them to Team Rose training grounds. Training grounds, two hours later. Naruto was working on katas in slow motion with Tenzo while ten clones worked on tree climbing under Yugo's gaze and Hikaru taught another ten clones the shuriken shadow clone jutsu. As he focused on the forms Tenzo brought to light his situation. We have four weeks of uninterrupted training. Every day from 6 am after guy till 9 at night I will work you to the bone. In this first week we will work on solidifying your basics and hopefully have you master both the shuriken shadow clone and the tree climbing. Like all ANBU in this time, the kawarimi will become seal less and instantaneous as it is the jutsu that has saved more ninjas than any other jutsu or tool. After that water walking, shunshin, kenjutsu, and an elemental attack will be introduced. You will also have memorized the ANBU signs and rulebook in this time as well as the map of the Land of Fire. I can already do Kawarimi without seals. Naruto looked away in embarrassment as Tenzo gaped at him. Show me. He ordered. Naruto wouldn't lie, but Tenzo had trouble believing that the boy could learn to use the jutsu to that level without help, no matter how wrong his records were. Naruto instantly replaced himself with his backpack about a hundred feet away. I had nothing better to do last summer and read in a book about how getting Kawarimi to be sealless was a chakra control exercise I thought it would help my clones. Naruto didn't mention he took seven months of practicing every day to do so. W.L. Good work. Then we will replace the time with hand speed practice in general and battle experience with the Kawarimi. What happens after that? A month of training won't make me ready for missions. Naruto scowled as Tenzo wrapped his arm with a twig to correct his elbow height for a grapple move. After that our team will take guard and patrol missions of non-essential areas for another two months to solidify teamwork. During this grace period your speed, dodging, taijutsu and kenjutsu skills will continue to be worked into something passable and the course trap specialist will begin improving your repertoire in the art. I left space throughout these three months for two hours in the evening for you to learn another skill of either fuinjutsu, more ninjutsu, or additional weaponry. Which do you prefer? Naruto thought for a moment. More ninjutsu sounded fun but to be honest Tenzo explained his control needed a lot of improvement before more jutsu than the ones planned could be learned, so that was out. Weaponry was necessary but he already had three hours dedicated to it six days a week any more throwing or sword practice shouldn't be needed. That left Fuinjutsu, ceiling. I choose Fuinjutsu, Captain Naruto said finally in a small voice, remembering the rule of while on duty or training, quiet and serious. Tenzo nodded in approval at both his answer and the volume. Good choice, Mouse. I don't know more than the basics, but I have a feeling even without help you'll find the art to be easy, he said knowingly. Naruto narrowed his eyes slightly and prepped to grill his captain on the subject when Tenzo cut off his intake of air. Ten minute break. I believe it's time we actually introduce ourselves besides names. The four ninjas sat in a circle while clones continue their work, masks off in the grass. I know we haven't really had the chance yet, but let's do proper introductions. Say your likes, dislikes, hobbies, and dreams. I will start. My name is Tenzo. I like Kanoha, tea ceremonies, nature, and reading architecture books. I don't like traitors, those who harm nature, and loud people here Naruto winced. He was much quieter already, but he didn't want to make his captain mad. I am busy as captain of Team Row, but a hobby would be gardening. My dream is make Kanoha strong and help you all become stronger. Yugo went next. Yugo Yuzuki, I like my boyfriend Hayate, Kanoha, Dango, and swords. 
I dislike those who look down on Kenjutsu and those who abandon comrades. My hobbies are sparring and visiting the hot springs. My dream is to become the world's greatest Kenjutsu user. Yo! I am Hikaru Hyuga, the best Hyuga in town. I like my clan, Kanoha, and messing around. I dislike seriousness, my clan's caged bird seal, and those who hate pranks. My hobbies are messing with people and origami. My dream is to become a NBU commander and raise a family. Hikaru's speech was joking and fun, bringing a smile to Naruto's face. Your go, Shibi. And the smile was gone. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, Hokage-sama, even if I don't trust him at the moment was Naruto's unspoken addition, and my new teammates. I dislike traitors, people who mock me, and the three minutes it takes for the ramen to cook. My dream, well it was to be Hokage, but now I don't know. Probably to become strong enough to protect my precious people. Naruto finished, not noticing the small smiles his teammates shared. That alone made him more qualified for the position than half of the ninja. Good job. We have three months to make Naruto ready for B and a class missions, let's get to work. Yugo looked determined at Tenzo's words while Hikaru and Naruto jumped for joy. Oi! Act your age, Hikaru. And Naruto you're on duty. Yugo scolded. Naruto quieted and stood ramrod straight but Hikaru looked hurt. Ah, but you senpai I'm only fifteen. Let me have fun with the chibi. He pouted. Naruto felt the need to hit his senpai but held back if only because he stood no chance of landing said hit last night proved that unfortunate truth. Okage's office. You let Naruto into ANBU? Are you insane, Okage-sama? Kakashi kept his voice mostly calm but the absence of his book suggested otherwise. Saratobi sighed in annoyance at the man's repeating questions. We've been over this before, Kakashi. Naruto is now one of my personal ANBU, not your future student. But, I was supposed to. If you want to play the teach him card you should have approached him in the academy like I suggested after he failed the first time. Trying to convince me now won't work. Kakashi's head drooped in shame. It's true he should have done more for the blonde besides the occasional guard rotation or donated groceries. However, his head whipped up in hope. If you were to offer a young ANBU some tracking or ninjutsu lessons on his days off Sunday, I believe then I wouldn't have any problems with it. Kakashi beamed at the chance. He'd make this right. Understood, Hokage-sama. In a puff of smoke he left. I sounded so confident while defending my decision to him, but I have my doubts. I don't. He's already become more emotionally stable under Tenzo and Guy will be working on his endurance every morning as a favor to me. Naruto is fitting in quite nicely. A voice spoke from nowhere but Saratobi knew who it was no matter how well they distorted their voice or masked their chakra. Dragon he breathed. Report on the initiation last night. Dragon chuckled. The bonfire went well too well really. Hikaru started a ritualistic dancing. Honestly, if not for his eyes I wouldn't know he was from a major clan that prided themselves on their image. Sarutobi snorted. The same could be said for you, especially before. Perhaps. After a pregnant cause Sarutobi speaks again. Is it wise to separate Naruto from the village for three months? I believe so. It gives Naruto time to heal after finding out about his burden and the chance for him to fade from their minds. True, but not telling Iraka and his classmates? Dragon shrugged at the concern. Most ANBU don't spread their identities around anyways even if it's not forbidden among allies. Keeping Naruto busy will also keep him from pranking HQ or the village, especially as he can spam hundreds of himself. Both shuddered at the thought. Point taken, my friend. 4 a.m., next day. Naruto was awoken by being thrown into the ceiling. Y-O-S-H. Good morning my youthful neighbor. 
Let us work our flames of youth and become more youthful. Naruto groaned and reached for his uniform. Give me five minutes to get dressed. He mumbled. Guy gave a thumbs up in the darkened room and the flash from his teeth blinded a bleary-eyed Naruto. He worked on pulling the pants on and was moving to the shirt. Guy's patience ran short at this point and helped Naruto change into a green jumpsuit. At 9am an irate, bloody, and ridiculous-looking Naruto trudged to Rose training ground. His three teammates bit their lips to stop their laughter and dropped it, but not before Hikaru snapped a picture. You look rather youthful this morning. Tenzo said with a straight face. From that day on Naruto set his alarm ten minutes before four and was fully dressed before Guy arrived. Six days later, Sunday at noon. Naruto was dragging himself up the steps after a grueling eight-hour workout with Guy and his mini-me. Normal shinobi would be sore for weeks, but with Naruto a hot shower and relaxing afternoon eating ramen would cure every ache. However, waiting outside his door was his least favorite neighbor, Kakashi. The man had explained his odd behavior during their first meeting apparently he was supposed to be his jonin sensei but Naruto still didn't particularly like the man who just seemed to ignore you with his book yet still follow your every move. However, his captain and Yugo senpai always stressed manners, so Naruto put on the most polite and fake smile he knew. Hello, Kakashi. If you're looking for Captain Tenzo he is on a mission today Sundays or his free days the rest of the squad had patrol. Kakashi I smiled behind his book. I was actually looking for you, Naruto. I don't get my team for another week and even then it will be months before we do many missions. The Hokage told me Sundays were your days off, no? Naruto nodded and somehow the ice smile grew larger. Excellent. How would you like tracking lessons every Sunday from noon until 7? Naruto grinned slightly at that. He wasn't one to pass up more training. Maybe Kakashi wasn't that bad. Iraka, day of team placements. A fuming Iraka told the brats their team placements, and, same as canon, Sai replaces Naruto and walked out. His favorite student was nowhere to be found the ANBU commander just informed him that Naruto had an unusual placement and a homeschooled boy would fill the void on Team 7. Even the Hokage refused to tell him anything, claiming Naruto would contact him if he wished and that his new assignment and living quarters were classified for Jonin and above. And that translated to Iraka, a mere chunin, standing no chance to find out about his knuckle-headed student. Oh Naruto! What have you gotten into now? Collapsing at his desk at home, Iraka ran his fingers over his scar, grunting at the mysterious file box spotted on the bare wood. Being a Chunin teacher it wasn't uncommon for him to find such a scene if the Hokage wanted a certain lesson taught in the academy without the council interfering, or if Naruto hadn't been eating enough, a box or envelope would just magically appear. Sighing he pushed the medium file folder boxes lit away, immediately perking up at the sticky note saying real Naruto Uzumaki files classified. As Iraka read each report, test, and past graduation attempt his blood got hotter and hotter. By the end Iraka had tears from the realization he had screwed up. Thinking back Iraka realized he was to blame he never called on Naruto in his class, believing the other teachers who said he would just cause trouble, and treated him like he was just a troublemaker when in actuality Naruto's pranks were ingenious horrible for the victim, but ingenious. Instead of realizing Naruto wasn't stupid and his pranks were more than just childish escapades but elaborately planned missions Iraka had brushed off Naruto and believed treating him to ramen once a week made up for it. He didn't deserve a second chance, but a note on the last page gave him hope. One day he will visit you. Then, Iraka would apologize and make it up to him. Until then, Iraka had several teachers to visit. Time skip one month, first patrol. This is it? Naruto asked, a bit miffed. He heard how his appointment to ANBU would let him bypass the dreaded deranks that Kakashi complained having to lead his students on. But this Sirank patrol and guard mission of the hospital seemed to be the ANBU version of D's, no action really, moving through the rafters while suppressing his chakra, he barely had that down now and remaining unseen for 12-hour shifts in uncomfortable positions. 
The three explosive notes he finished this morning for his first mission were itching to be used, but using explosives in the hospital were frowned upon. His patrol partner, Yugao, bopped him on the head. Yes, this is it. What, did you think ANBU was all assassinations and sabotage? Naruto nodded seriously, thinking that yes, that is what he signed up for. Well, it's not. Every squad has both village duties and border patrol to go along with the higher level missions. Now be quiet and go guard the front lobby. And remember the radio and shadow clones for emergencies. Naruto sighed and left for his mission. The posts for the ANBU split each floor into two sections. Team Ro was assigned the bottom two floors while another managed the top three. From his perch Naruto had a front row seat to all the hospital drama. It was horribly boring but a difficult man at the desk looked promising. Sir, please calm down. I will not calm down. Not until you take me to my son. A simple sea rank to river they say? Simple my ass, he's been in heart surgery for six hours. A burly civilian waved his fist in a threatening manner and the nurse gave the signal for his intervention. Code Anger Naruto whispered into the headset. Code Anger translated into a civilian on the verge of physical violence. Appearing between the Mednin and the red-faced father Naruto said the rehearsed lines Captain Tenzo drilled into his head the past two days. Sir, my apologies for any trouble, but the healers are doing their best. Please be patient and sit down. Naruto pointed a finger to the nearest seat, feeling very much like a crossing guard rather than a shinobi. A fist comes at him and only the reflexes his training ground into him allowed Naruto's hand to grab the meaty glob, pumping chakra to match the strength of the man three times his size. Calm down? Hell no, you ninja always order us civilians around and I'm sick of it. He shouldn't even be a ninja. Take me to my son, now. Yugao shunned Shin behind him, knocking him out with a tranquilizer. Naruto inclined his head gratefully and two orderlies dragged the unconscious father away. Relieved, Naruto turned, nodded to the grateful but perplexed nurse probably not used to a 5-foot 2A NBU and disappeared to his post again. Good work, Mouse Yugao's voice praised from the headset. Naruto smiled slightly. Maybe guard posts weren't so bad. Naruto, in his off-duty gear, dived under a branch in pursuit of the package. Kakashi was having him practice the capture and retrieval aspect of ANBU, and his tiny summons packin was deceivingly elusive for his size. Naruto refused to give up however Ramen was on the line. Ever since Naruto joined ANBU he had a sneaking suspicion everyone hated Ramen or at least him going to get Ramen. Monday through Saturday lunch and dinner were packed affairs to save time while Sundays were too exhausting for him to want to trudge across town in the opposite direction of the apartment for ramen. The couple of times Hikaru treated him they always stopped at the Benkunai, a bar and grill for active-slash-former ANBU. Deliveries were impractical as well for his favorite food. Naruto was stuck to instant ramen and a thief was going around the complex that only stole the instant cups. It was an outrage, as the bastard was able to bypass every trap he set up, even the barrier seals. But Kakashi had given Pakin a scroll to carry today. If Naruto caught him he would be treated to unlimited ramen at Ichiraku's. Nothing would hinder his quest. Almost there. The pug diverted himself from a mud pit trap and blindly charged past another set of explosive tags. Closer. Packin rounded a corner, where five clones waited. He dodged three but two more were waiting with a net and glue. I hate you he growled in a rough voice as he tried to clean his paws off. Naruto smirked and grabbed the scroll. I win. A slow clap sounds from behind. Kakashi and Dragon materialized from the trees. Impressive, only one hour to capture and even I couldn't track Naruto most of the time. Kakashi complimented with an eye smile. Dragon whistled. To keep up with the Nin Kin after only a month. Not too shabby. Not good enough, but almost passable. Naruto beamed at Dragon's roundabout praise. 
Dragon was harsh at times by monthly inter-squad training he led still left bruises on Naruto's spleen, but he was fair. If Dragon said it was almost passable, then it was almost good, by normal standards. Then again, Naruto was in ANBU everyone else's standards didn't apply to them. Thank you senpai, commander. Naruto bowed. Before he would have loudly proclaimed how of course he was awesome, but that died the day Iruka almost did. Well, that Intenzo tazzed him or burned a ramen cup every time he boasted or acted rude. So much precious wasted. I think you earned the ramen, Naruto, my treat. Kakashi noticed Dragon back away slightly to the side, but didn't think much of it. Until he was flapping in the wind as Naruto forcibly dragged him towards the stand. What are we waiting for? Ramen calls me. Blessed Ramen, here I come. Poor Kakashi could only hope to survive the hyperactive blonde's charge as the boy slipped from serious on duty mode to kid mode. Ramen stand. Kakashi was regaining consciousness in time to see Naruto devour his 17th bowl. Keep em coming, Tochi. Kakashi senpai is paying. Naruto cheered. Tochi chuckled, glad his favorite blonde was back his stand needed the money. Naruto. Where have you been for a month? Even your apartment was cleaned out. I am swatted Naruto with her towel to gain his attention. Seeing the red aura surround his big sister he gulped. W-L, I am. I passed and am now a part of. A special assignment for the Hokage, Kakashi interjected. ANBU weren't really supposed to advertise their status those that figured it out, fine. Otherwise? Need to know only. He shoots Naruto a meaningful look, at which point the blonde nods. Yeah, a special assignment. Ninja stuff, can't talk about it. He grinned at her, and she relaxed. Oh ho ho. That must mean you're closer to being Hokage, right Naruto, and where's your headband? She smiled brightly, as did Tucci. Naruto frowned slightly, and their smiles turned to confusion. Ha <laughs> ha, see, I don't really want to be Hokage anymore. The paperwork, counsels Ba, too much work for an awesome ninja like me. He said cheekily, only to yelp when, despite his captain being on a mission, a jolt shoots up his spine for every bragging word he spoke. Oh, and I'm trying to keep my passing status a secret so if you could not say anything please? Father and daughter soften their eyes and nod, understanding. Kakashi was somewhat shocked at Naruto's lifelong ambition changing but realized he shouldn't be. It was common knowledge in the Jonin and ANBU circles that the third and Naruto had a sort of falling out after Naruto learned of his tenant. Since that night the Hokage looked even older than normal and cringed every time he gazed at the pictures of a younger, smiling Naruto wearing his hat. Rumor was the boy had even taken to calling the Hokage by his proper name, scaring many. If Naruto called someone by their proper title and they never had an era nickname, then Naruto respected them as a person and authority figure. An example of this would be Iruka or Kakashi, neither ever receiving a playful butchering. But, if Naruto gave someone a personalized nickname and said person betrayed him enough to lose said nickname, it was the equivalent to being spit in the face and peed on by Naruto. So much like his mother. Oh, then what is your dream, O oh awesome ninja? I am giggled, breaking Kakashi out of his musings. To be strong enough to protect those precious to me. And maybe get a ninja animal. He added absent-mindedly. Kakashi perked at this. A ninja animal? What kind? Was his little brother trying to emulate him, to become a dog summoner? If so, Kakashi's private dreams of his own mini-me would be realized. He could rub it into Guy that his look-alike lived next door. Yeah, a cat, though ninja cats cost the pay of an S-rank mission so it will take about a year before I can afford one. Still, cats are so cool. And there goes the dream, for cats were the opposite of Kakashi's hip and cool. Unless. Say, Naruto. Try this on. Naruto slurps a noodle and grabs the cloth shoved his way. Oh, uh, mask? 
Naruto was hesitant it almost felt like Kakashi wanted a clone, but surely the man wasn't that desperate to one-up Guy, was he? Kakashi I smiled. Just try it on, okay? It makes you look cool. He shrugs and slides it over his face. Ayam pulls out a hand mirror and lets him look. He had to admit, he did look cool. I like it. Naruto says after a minute more of admiring himself. Kakashi's eye smile somehow got larger. Good, good. Phase one complete. He muttered, too low for Naruto to hear. Within a year Naruto would have a dog not some smelly cat. Well I have to get going early training tomorrow and wall patrol. Naruto slid out from the bar and bolted across the rooftops at speeds unheard of for a fresh graduate. Kakashi couldn't be prouder as his sensei's son already resembled a well-trained shinobi. A cough brings Kakashi back to the ramen bar and he blanches at the bell. F57 bowels? Tuchi cackled and had dollar signs at the money he just made. Six weeks later. Hiruzen puffed on his pipe, groaning at his jonin stupidity. A simple C rank, turned into a B or a rank 1 after the group was attacked by the Demon Brothers, Missing Ninja from Kiri. Normally the procedure was to kill Missing Ninja and take their bounties, as interrogating every renegade genin and shunin wasted resources. But these two were from the Bloody Mist, an island nation so tight-lipped even Jiraiya had yet to get reliable intel on the smallest of the Great Five in years and these demon brothers had only defected thirteen months ago. Get me Team Ro he spoke to what appeared to be thin air. Time for Naruto to experience his first pickup mission. If only Kakashi hadn't insisted his team would continue the mission, with or without backup no one could be spared for that long but Saratobi couldn't justify forcing them to return without the village looking weak, it had to be the commanding officer's call. And Team Seven's leader believed putting it to a vote. What is this, a council meeting? Why can't all my shinobi be like my ANBU? Six hours later. Team Ro barely touched the branches, they went so fast. Naruto was forced to use his chakra to keep the whiplash from yanking his cloak's hood down. The mission wasn't urgent, but their captain wished to test their speed and agility after not being outside the village for weeks, in Naruto's case, ever. The verdict? Naruto held them up. Five-minute break eat and drink Tenzo signed. Rule 12 of ANBU mission parameters stated talking out loud was forbidden unless absolutely necessary. Yes captain they signed back. Sorry for holding you guys back, Naruto bowed his head in shame. For all his speed it would still take months before he could match his teammates in their ridiculous travel pace. Do not apologize mouse. When we get back up agility and speed practice. Tenzo assured him. By new year you will be quicker than Wolf. Said Wolf scoffed silently at this he was the second fastest among them without Chakra. With Chakra Tenzo added, breaking the budding pride in Naruto and panic in Hikaru. Four hours later Ro landed around Team 7 who had taken to guarding the prisoners, Meizu and Gozu, who were gagged and glaring. Tenzo stepped forward, him having the only necessary speaking role. Senpai. Team Ro, Confirmation 17 Ro, are here to apprehend the prisoners for questioning back in Kanoha. Tenzo was stiff, formal. At the apartments he bantered and relaxed around his old captain. On missions? Tenzo could put the daimyo to shame and etiquette. Thank you, Tiger. I take it this mouse's first time on a pickup mission? Kakashi drawled even as his eye bore into the smallest ANBU. For his part Naruto didn't sweat or fidget, even as Sasuke and Sakura balked at him and Sai merely gazed without expression. Ah, yes, senpai. You may leave now, we'll take it from here. Kakashi led the genin away. Naruto Chanel chakra to his ears, a control exercise Hikaru started him on a few days ago he could only hold it for a 30 seconds while mastered was an hour, to listen in on his old classmates and his replacement. Kakashi sensei, who was that ANBU? He looked my age Sasuke questioned, feeling weak. Ah, Sasuke. You will find there are shinobi younger than you three but stronger than I am. 
age is inconsequential to shinobi. To be a ninja is to negate any obstacle one has, such as being too old or too small. Kakashi hid his smile as he imagined Naruto bristling at the comment. Naruto cut the chakra off and did in fact bristle for a moment until Tenzo brought him back. Mouse. We will taking them back using the long method instead of sealing scrolls to get you used to it and for sleep deprivation training. Naruto nodded and everyone winced slightly. The long method involved locking their chakra up and binding them after checking for weapons. It would be a grueling 20-hour light jog. Come over here and draw the seals on them I'll check them before you activate them to prevent an explosion. Naruto worked carefully, ignoring the two missing ninjas' fearful and hate-filled eyes. Within half an hour and a lesson on a new knot, Team Ro was off. Naruto stumbled, bleary-eyed and dirty, into his room. Not bothering to take his uniform off he plank fell into bed. Guy and Kakashi were both on missions and his team was off until tomorrow night all was good, he could sleep. As he drifted off Naruto considered what bad karma he had to have been given Tenzo as a captain on the mission. For the entirety of the 21 hours Naruto was forced to be in the middle to clutch the prisoner's rope and strengthen it with chakra the easy job. Until Tenzo decided he also had to work on point balancing with one head while reciting the advanced theory of hand signs all twelve of them and the history behind them. Anytime he messed up either task Naruto had to restart. Needless to say it was tedious and by the end his team was prepared to suppress him if he tapped into the Kyubi chakra for the first time his frustration was palatable. All that was behind him though now and Naruto was free of sadistic sensei until tomorrow night for hospital patrol week later. And that's all the intel we have. The goal is to bring back Ryuga alive for interrogation. Dragon barked. Naruto and his team were kneeled in the commander's dim office, being given their first A-rank mission since Naruto joined. Tenzo hadn't wanted this he and the Hokage hoped to keep Naruto close for at least another month, but the village's safety came first, and Naruto's abilities made Ro the best squad to track down the traitor before he reached Rice. Even if none of them were fresh. Ryuga Ryushi. A slightly above average Chunin, 22 years old. Received a field promotion three years prior for his contributions in the Barrier Corps, but most of his colleagues couldn't name a single thing about him except he was a diligent worker. As they set out through the north gate Naruto couldn't help but notice nothing pointed to traitorous activities. Ryuga was just so average. That's what makes him the perfect spy. Yugo signed. Naruto cocked his head. Being mediocre in every way? Exactly, no ninja is able to remain so completely under the radar. If you ever find someone that has no life, hobby, quirk, or bad days, they're up to something. She explained. Mouse 200 clones send out in pairs. When they find the trail tell us. Tenzo ordered, deadly serious, as was Hikaru. Ryuga defected last night around midnight after his superior opened a loyalty investigation on him. It was now 7 am. He was part of the barrier team. The safety of Kanoa rested on their shoulders. It only took 30 minutes for the trail to be found. Ryuga's chakra signature had been tagged leaving the barrier in the direction to Rice, and the man wasn't well versed in track evasion, making it child's play for Naruto. Now they were approaching the valley of the end, the border between the two countries. If he goes over border permission to pursue? Yugo asks as they gain on him, Naruto clones and Hikaru disabling the few traps set up. Yes, but once we set over the border, if we are captured or killed we will be lab-led missing ninja to keep Kanoha from the backlash. That put a heavy silence on the group. There was only two reasons that directive would be made, the first is that the target belongs to said nation, and the other was the nation had a hidden village, meaning conducting missions, and not just passing through, on their land was equivalent to openly declaring war. Somehow, in the recent past, Rice had started their own village, and it was on Kanoha's doorstep. Ryuga was close he just made it past the valley. In his hands were the plans for Kanoha's barrier points necessary for Orochimaru-sama's plan during the Chunin exams. 
The original plan was for Ryuga to send the scroll with Kabuto next week, but the loyalty investigation changed everything. Ryuga was headed towards a better life, one where his true talent would be recognized, not stunted, because he wasn't some big shot name. He hated pretending to be weak in Odo, he was a jonin, not a pitiful chunin. They would see, Kanoha would realize their mistake soon. Ryuga Ryushi. Surrender yourself, you're surrounded. Tenzo spoke with confidence, making his voice echo with chakra. Naruto clones hinged into different ANBU members circled in, Tonto's drawn. The real team row were mixed in. Crap. They sent over 20 ANBU after me. But I'm just a Chunin, even if I'm a part of the barrier squad. Heh, I'll bet they'll underestimate me, and then I'll strike. He smirked arrogantly and pulled out a chakra conductive knife, his pride and joy, preparing for an escape. Unfortunately for Ryuga, a and B U don't underestimate, especially those under Tenzo's care. He taught Naruto and the others from their first practice that A and B U treat babies the same way they treat Kages with extreme prejudice. Formation C. Ten of the clones jumped close, puffing away with twice the normal amount just before they connected. In the confusion, Yugo and Hikaru go in, Hikaru blocking the Tenketsu on Ryuga's arms and legs while Yugo took out the weapon. Finally. Tenzo created wood bindings and Naruto shinshined behind Ryuga, knocking him out with a chop like dragon taught him during the last practice. Tenzo sealed the traitor into a prisoner scroll and the ANBU began to head back. Good work. Let's go dash down and they hit the deck. A fist the size of a boulder grazed the crown of Naruto's head, cutting a strand. He shivered at the close call. And the Kimichi. Hikaru led a stream of curses. Not just any Akimichi that is Akira, an A-rank missing ninja. She defected two years ago now we know where she went. In front of them was indeed an Akimichi, more muscle than fat though, and a music note headband adorned her forehead. You crossed the border prepare to die, she taunted. Tenzo cursed inside. They just finished a gate patrol before being given this mission no one was fresh and Akira was bordering on Elite Jonin two years ago what level would she be now, studying in a new village? No, better to talk their way out than fight keeping Ryuga from escape was top priority. We have not crossed the border, I assure you. I suggest we go our separate ways instead of needless bloodshed. Tenzo reasoned. Akira just laughed. I say you cross the border and your bounty alone, Woodland Tiger, will pay my food bill for a month. She expanded both arms and the group scattered. Truth was Akira was not actually looking for a fight she was at less than half her chakra and recovering from a mission. But orders were orders. She had to get Ryuga, take his intel, and then kill him. Kanoha couldn't find out her master's plans. Wolf now. Tenzo yelled, and Hikaru landed on the right hand. Sending a lightning-enhanced gentle fist, it's stupid for other Hyuga to not use much ninjutsu so much potential, at the elbow, the arm shrinks to normal size, hanging limp. Hikaru is hit by the left hand, however, and is slammed into a tree. Yugo blocks another punch with her sword and preps the planned counterattack, only for both to be blown away, screaming with blood pouring from the ears. How do you like my decapitating sound waves, kitty cat? Akira sneers, showing holes in her fingers letting out sound waves. She expands her whole middle, ready to squash the two. Wood style, tree limbs Tenzo states quietly from behind, and five thick wood pillars rise to ensnare Akira. Meanwhile, Naruto and two clones pick up the unconscious Yugao and Hikaru, taking them back to Kanoa's side, but not before receiving a burst eardrum from a disrupted sound wave. Like this can hold me. Partial expansion jutsu. And one finger from the non-blocked hand enlarged, sending Tenzo into a tree with a sickening thud. Tenzo bursts into wood, and the real one rises out of the ground. Sound waves tear his armor apart, giving him deep lacerations in the torso. Take that you bastard. She ground out. Akira had let loose the last of her chakra and the wood bindings drained the rest away. She struggled to stay awake, but smirked, wanting to go out with a bang. 
Tenzo sees this and finishes with the plan. Now, Mouse. Tenzo shouts as he slumps against a tree. Naruto switches with the destroyed clone. Six hand signs later and his second elemental jutsu impacts Akira's head. Wind style, air force palm and a compressed vacuum of air fires into the woman's skull from his hand center, blowing her brains out. Mission accomplished. Tenzo whispered and fell unconscious. Captain. Naruto was frantic. After sealing what was left of Akira Akimichi he lugged his captain over his shoulder, balance broken from his burst eardrum. It takes almost five hours for Naruto and clones to reach the patrol near the gates. Immediately his team was taken to the ANBU hospital and Naruto was rushed into a meeting with the Hokage, Commander, and Danzo after a quick healing session. ANBU Agent Mouse, we are here to have an oral report on Ryuga's capture and apparent death, seeing as the scroll containing him was damaged beyond salvage when your captain, Tiger, was injured. The Hokage was grave on one hand Ryuga failed in handing over the information to whomever he was trying to and an A-rank Rouge was taken out. On the other hand, they couldn't interrogate him, and both of the dead were damaged beyond a mind scan. A hollow victory, really. Hokage-sama Team Ro, after a 12-hour shift, was summoned to track down the traitor Ryuga Ryushi. We set out from the north gate. Naruto took a deep breath as he completed his reported. His stomach churned as his superiors seemed to loom down on him. He followed orders to a T backup. Twice he saw an opportunity to jump in before the signal or to rescue injured parties, and twice he let the opportunity slip past because of orders. Yes, they won. And yes, everyone was expected to survive and be back on rotation in a week. I see you blaming yourself, Mouse. Dragon cut into his thoughts. You were not ready for this mission yet, but you performed it to a high standard. We lost a valuable source of intelligence, but we kept everyone alive that is most important here. Ryuga didn't escape, marking this as a successful mission. Do not coddle the boy. The mission parameters were clearly. To bring Ryuga back and keep him from any outside forces they did that. Being alive was preferable, but be grateful our secrets weren't leaked. Saratobi stopped Danzo from tearing Naruto down. The boy was tired, injured, though he was mostly healed by now, and beating himself up over his inability to do more yet. Go rest, Mouse. You will spend the week under my tutelage until your squad is ready. Be at HQ tomorrow at 9. Oh, and the bounty will be split evenly between your squad. Dismissed. Naruto wordlessly disappeared in a shunshin, longing for his bed. You put the weapon in ANBU, but still you coddle him. For shame, Hiruzen. Danzo sneered as he hobbled out. That was his first kill, correct? Saratobi asked with an eye roll after the elder left. Dragon nodded. Tomorrow it will hit him, after he is rested and settled I'll give him the talk. Saratobi closed his eyes, wishing he could be the one to give it, but knowing Naruto still hadn't completely forgiven him. Very well then. Sunday, two months later. You'll have to do better than that. Naruto said as he danced around the field, dodging Sasuke's endless stream of fireballs. It was funny outmaneuvering his former rival, but he also felt bored. Was he really rookie of the year? Sheesh, I could take him without my hands now. Naruto had spent a week being Dragon's training dummy disguised as actual teaching. Naruto had walked into the HQ training room sick to his stomach as he realized he killed someone. He looked at his hands in horror at what he did, until the commander cleared his throat. Dragon told him bluntly. You kill that's what a ninja does. You didn't enjoy it that is good, that means you're human, but grow up, killing and dying for the village is a part of our job. Now prepare yourself, your mind this week. And without another word Naruto was sent flying with a punch. Hell week had commenced. Dragon called it dodge and speed training. Naruto had called it being a dragon's chew toy 101. 
That was two months ago, and since then his team had upped their training to prevent such a simple enemy outclassing them with an unexpected trick. Naruto used his reward money to bribe a medic ANBU in how to patch up wounds better Tenzo almost died from blood loss, and Naruto apparently should have sutured the cuts and checked for concussion before moving any of them. The medic, another Hyuga, was pleased to see someone taking a further interest in first aid, as only captains had to take courses over it and if the captain was out, many squads were screwed beyond the absolute basics as competent combat medics numbered less than 10 in the entire village the others were basically doctors with a little ninja training. Naruto wasn't able to learn medical ninjutsu, but within a few weeks he could stitch, cauterize, and brace to just below battlefield standards in speed and quality. Three banded cleanups and a two-week border assignment had forced Naruto to fully get over the killing as an absolute last resort feeling he had grown up within the academy. Many shinobi in peacetime could find ways to just capture or evade targets and rarely had to end lives ANBU was it like that. Though the force spent a large amount of time as silent watchers inside the walls, they got their hands dirtier than most. Naruto learned to accept it over time. It helped that Hikaru took it upon himself to force Naruto to find a hobby. A small plant now greeted him after work every day from the living room window. Today, Naruto had gone to the training grounds for his tracking lessons only to find Kakashi Senpai waiting with his genin team, a pale boy he'd never talked to before smiling creepily at him. Sasuke had taken one look at his black outfit and mask and smirked. As he was off duty and planned to go out to eat afterwards Naruto had left his headband and emergency uniform sealed in a scroll in his pocket no one but the Hokage and those above Chunin rank had caught on that the demon became a shinobi. While not imperative for him to hide the fact, the promise of a ramen buffet from Tenzo if he managed to keep a low profile until the Chunin exams was plenty of motivation. Job. Trying to copy a ninja since you couldn't be one? In truth Sasuke was curious no one had seen Naruto since the graduation exam. One person swore they spotted him at Ichiraku's once two months ago, but nobody was sure. He had become a ghost. The Naruto standing in front of him was like a cat slender, light on his feet, and deadly quiet. Hello, Kakashi-senpai. Naruto chose to ignore his old schoolmates he technically outranked them and if he started insulting them Tenzo would have his hide for setting a bad example. Even while on missions he finds out. Are they practicing with us? Hello, Naruto. Yes, my cute little genin are starting tracking to prepare for the Chunin exams in four months. Naruto nodded in understanding. The commander debriefed us on that last week, so many patrols and guard stations and we get the worst one, Naruto grumbled. Team Ro was on second stage duty, meaning they were going to be stuck in Anko's personal playground. Captain Tenzo already had two practices a week scheduled in the forest to prepare and set up checkpoints. Kakashi went slightly in mutual sympathy, not missing those days of monotonous watching of stupid gen and play fighting. You'll be fine he reassured weakly, not believing himself for a second many ANBU tried to be put on medical leave or long-term missions when Kanoha hosted the exams. But enough of that. Naruto, you are going to be the target for these three today. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the genin while Sasuke and Sakura scoffed. Like that Baka could be anything special. I bet Sasuke will find him easily. Sakura shrieked loudly. Why should I waste my time with them senpai? If I'm here to be a target then I would rather go and nap at home. Naruto turned to leave. If you don't get caught I'll teach you the second step to your win manipulation. That stopped the young ANBU he finally mastered the leaf cutting exercise but nobody knew or had time to tell him what the second stage was until after the chunin exams. And teach you a win jutsu tonight. That did it. Of course I'd like to help. Welcome to hell, Jenin, and just try to catch me. Naruto said with a grin before Naruto was replaced with a log without any smoke or seals. Kakashi chuckled at his students, well, two of them the third was blank, expressions. Naruto was on a special assignment, so to say, which is why he isn't on a team and you haven't seen him, Kakashi answered the unspoken questions. When they paused to contemplate his words the jonin decided to motivate them. Well. 
You have two hours so I'd start tracking him his specialty, his traps, and tracking him will be difficult as his ears have become almost as good as an Inazuka. And his chakra sensing will be ANBU level within the year went unsaid Kakashi couldn't crush his students' hopes before they began. Watching his students dart into the forest Kakashi hoped his plan to nip his students' egos in the bud would work. Ever since the Wave Mission Team 7 had begun thinking themselves the best in Kanoa simply for surviving Zabuza and beating his apprentice. Cockiness and arrogance killed more shinobi than many would care to admit, and Kakashi was determined to not let his students become an engraving on the memorial stone. If they were beaten by Naruto, their pride would be crushed, allowing Kakashi to build them back up properly. As Naruto dodged another of Sasuke's sloppy punches he sighed. Just because he kept out of reach of them today and ended up capturing them Sasuke demanded that power like Naruto should just drop on his knees and hand over his hours of training impossible. It would have been worse if the blonde had divulged that Kakashi tutored him. Naruto finally grew tired of the game and shunshined himself behind the older boy, knocking him out with a chop, following the same plan of attack he used on Ryuga basic but effective. Dragon always said flashy jutsu were fine but a kunai or fist usually got the job done. Lately Naruto had started to see the logic in that world view. Sakura and Sai stood a bit speechless. Here was the dead last, taking out the top graduate with little effort. Sai was of course stronger than Sasuke, though he was ordered to only show it in emergencies, but he was still surprised. Kakashi clapped slowly from a tree. That was a very decisive victory, Naruto. Sakura, Sai, take Sasuke home please and let him recover his pride alone. Oh, and you are not allowed to talk about your training here today or about seeing Naruto, am I clear? He bore his eye into them, releasing killing intent. Sakura and Sai give affirmations and carry their unconscious teammate away. After they vanish down the path Kakashi I smiles at his least annoying student. Naruto, I believe I owe you a jutsu. Six hours later. Wind style, drilling air bullets. Naruto whispered on team row, one had to learn to barely whisper the attacks in less than a pinch, and his three teammates actually had enough control to not use the speech release for focusing chakra on the lower rank jutsu pushing his stomach out with chakra before compressing it, expelling two masses of compressed air towards a boulder twice the size of Kakashi. The two hit, and the boulder was cracked straight through the middle. That's enough for the day, Kakashi ordered, and Naruto collapsed to one knee. For not completing your elemental manipulation yet you show surprising ability with the A-rank jutsu. With practice and cutting the waterfall I'm sure you'll be able to get up to six bullets. Kakashi I smiled as Naruto groaned and fell face first into the dirt. Of course, using a stronger call would give you a cushion of control. He added. You know why I can't do that, but thanks, Naruto mumbled. I have tower patrol for the week so I can send clones out to work on the waterfall. He wasn't happy about being given the right corner position for the entire week it was the only spot that required a constant stream of the chameleon jutsu. Yugo and Tenzo swore it was to make him master it, but Naruto suspected they were just too lazy to do it themselves. Hey, senpai? Naruto asked hesitantly after a moment. Kakashi gave the go-ahead motion. I asked the Hokage about my parents again and he said he didn't know about them but he had that look in his eye the one when he's lying to me so I was wondering if you knew about them? Kakashi winced inside, hating himself for what he was about to do. I can't answer that, Naruto, so stop asking, he said harshly. Naruto flinched at the tone and Kakashi went back to his cheerful tone. Anyway, it will take months to spilt the waterfall, take your time, and I'll see next week. And Naruto was left alone to crawl back to his apartment. Next day, after shift. Naruto rolled his muscles, stretching after a tedious day of standing without being seen and listening to the Hokage do paperwork. A few times Jonin and Jenin squads would show for mission assignments or reports, but general the sound of stamping was the only break in silence. Then Kakashi's team came in for another Sirank, a diplomatic one requiring the Hokage's approval. Kakashi. I thought I told you to stop spending time at the Memorial Stone for hours you're three hours late. The Hokage growled slightly. 
Naruto latched onto the words, Memorial Stone. I've heard of that maybe my parents are on there? Why didn't I think of that before? Naruto, longing for any scrap of his past, determined himself to unravel the mystery of where he came from. After that Naruto had counted the seconds until his freedom. He set a new record for changing into his street clothes and darted out of the dim base. At the stone, Naruto ran his fingers along each name. Kito Ushio, Sekira Yuzumo, Kushina Uzumaki, Bingo. Writing the name down inside the cover of the history book Tenzo had assigned, Naruto took off back to HQ Kushina was the only Uzumaki, making her most likely his mother. If the third never told him, that meant it was another secret a secret kept in the basement of the records vault. At Dragon's office. Excuse me, Dragon-sama. Naruto stood ramrod straight, showing the most respect he could. He had to get on Dragon's good side. Ah, mouse. What does my favorite punching bag need? He sounded amused. Naruto resisted the urge to twitch, missing his mask already. I request to be assigned the records room rotation this week. Naruto said bluntly. Dragon hummed. Really? Now why would a young agent like you request the most monotonous post? Naruto had his excuse ready. This week Captain and Yugo Senpai are leaving on Wednesday for a special mission while Hikaru Senpai is putting in for a vacation until they return Sunday. I wish to earn extra money for a better sword and extra few injutsu lessons from Jiraiya-sama when he returns for the Chunin exams. I am told the record's rotation pays more than others. Everything Naruto said was true he did need extra money records paid equal to a C rank and a half each shift to bribe Jiraiya-sama into teaching him for a couple hours on seals Naruto was on level 2, and level 3 was proving to be too much without a tutor to clear some things up and his squad did leave him for the week. Naruto originally would have taken the several days off as a reason to stay in a secluded training ground, camping supplies in hand, and work non-stop on wind manipulation and his new jutsu. Now he'd send ten clones to make progress on the waterfall while he snooped for his birth certificate and probable mother's file. Mm, very well, report tomorrow to Lizard for your post. You'll be in the lowest basement for the next week. Dragon chewed him away. When his subordinate was out of earshot Dragon allowed a chuckle. It's about time you started searching you're ready to know, even if our Hokage can't see it yet. Though his manipulation skills need work. Oh well, I guess another private session is in order. Apartment. Naruto was too giddy to sleep he would have a week to send clones into the complex his parents were at his fingertips. It was this elation that caused Naruto to be on the floor, Kanai pressed to his neck. Masi-chan, you make this too easy a sultry voice whispered in his ear. A shiver ran down his spine at that. Only one person was like this. Anko Senpai. You made your point please get off of me. Naruto tried to stay calm he found that when dealing with Anko, going off the deep end just turned her on. Ah, but this snake likes mice for snacks. Why can't you play with me? She pouted and got off him. Naruto breathed out, letting his heart beat slow. I take it Karina left you for Asuma tonight again? Naruto asked since she moved into an apartment down the hall a month ago she always bothered him, Kakashi, or Yugo when Karinai wouldn't let her in her own apartment upstairs. Anko pouted. Yeah, and no one to mess with at T&I. She looked hopefully at Naruto. No. Absolutely not. I won't pay for your dango. Or let you stay here tonight on my couch, even if you do swear it's more comfortable than yours. He made the X sign with his arms to emphasize his objection. What if I taught you how to make and use a sleeping poison this week so you won't have to buy them for missions? Damn it. He had been trying to decipher that recipe from the common poisons and sleeping toxins for dummies book for weeks, but there was a reason poison makers were very rare as he couldn't figure out the right mixture balance and kept killing the rats he bought for practice. And, really, the fact that in Naruto most shinobi couldn't do a bit of everything made them little more than magical soldiers instead, they should all understand the basics of most areas, if only to save money on supplies. 
Money didn't grow on trees and his squad's allotted supply funds never seemed to cover the want items like basic poisons that made transporting civilians or the injured easier, as carrying them while awake was dangerous if attacked and stasis scrolls were dangerous for non-shinobi as it linked to one's chakra, and civilians didn't have a developed network. Team Rogue was lucky to not need to sedate anyone yet because a pack of three needles cost more than a full C rank mission. Fine. I'll pay for ten plates of dango and you can sleep on my couch tonight. But I'll expect I'll be able to make that sleeping poison this week? He relented. When I'm through with you, you'll be completely immune to it and be able to whip it up and store in two minutes. Dango, here I come. And she charged towards her favorite dango shop, Naruto, over her shoulder.